everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Jamie, and this is The Best Magicians You Have Never Heard Of. Hey, welcome to the show. Today's guest is a Singaporean magician. That's right, Singapore, halfway around the world from us. He was the runner-up in the very first Singaporean street magic competition organized by the Singapore Flyer. In 2019, he became the first Singaporean magician to perform at the close-up gallery at the Magic Castle. Everybody please welcome Ming Da. The Ace of Spades, yeah. along with it. If this happens, this is a miracle. Right here with the Ace of Spades, I do have the Ace of Hearts, the Ace of, Ace of Clubs, Ace and the Ace, Ace of Diamonds. Yeah. Yeah. Ming, welcome to the show. It's so nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank so you, nice Jamie. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Absolutely. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into magic? Wow. So I've been in magic for about 16 years right now. I started off magic because I saw David Blaine on TV, you know, over here in Singapore. And I saw him perform on TV, his street magic special. And that was how I got to know about close-up magic and that was the first thing that I got into when I first learned magic you know stuff with cards and then coins and other things you know after, along the way and so that was the start of my journey in magic eventually it became what I really love to do and I decided you know what I want to give this a try to make this like my full-time job and that, that's what I did you know I perform in restaurants I perform in parties eventually I did uh, mostly corporate work right now and that's where I am right now performing magic full-time <laughs> I watched a bunch of your videos and uh, you're very good. And a, a big question I have for you is you're from Singapore. So it, it, English is not your first language, right? Well, it is here. Here's the it thing. Is, because in Singapore, our government make all of us learn in English. It is our administrative language. So we go through every, you know, uh, whether is it, uh, you know, forms that you need to fill in and stuff like that. Everything has to be in English and communicated through English. And that is why... I think most of us, I'm, I wouldn't say that all 100%, but most of us in Singapore, we are relatively good in English. Yeah, That's great. That's something I didn't know. So uh, you're obviously, you, you do all kinds of different magic from what I've seen from your videos. What is your passion? What makes you really happy as a magician? So what makes me happy as a magician? Over the years, this has changed. I mean, at the start, when I first started off magic, you know, it was about the reactions that you could get from people, right? The applause, the cheers and everything like that. Right. And there was a period of time where I was going for that, you know, getting people to like me, like the magic. And that was great. And after a while, I started to look into magic a bit deeper as I grow older as well, as I mature and try to see, you know, what can magic, um, what can magic give to people? And more than experience, more than just elic eliciting like, a reaction out of it. I, I like the fact that magic is like a metaphor, you know. Magic is something that can represent a lot of different things and ideas. And so um, that is where, for example, the storytelling part of the magic and the presentation comes into. I do enjoy that. And I also enjoy uh, just the pure sleight of hand of stuff, you know, <laughs> just looking at the slickness of the methods, the movements and, and people, you know. Uh, I am my, myself, I'm not so much that type of performer, but I do enjoy watching it as well, in that so, aspect. I'll tell you, so that's, that's me, that's what I do, right? I'm a, I'm a sleight of hand guy, I'm a finger flicker. Uh, a lot of people say that I'm more of a mechanic than I am a magician, but... Uh, that was my love that, that got me into it. That's what made me excited about it. So if you, if, if you were looking at a trick, just a, a sleight of hand card trick, what's your favorite trick? What would you love to see somebody else perform perfectly? Wow. Perfect card trick. Firstly, there's so many card tricks out there. It's, <laughs> it sure it's, is. So, it's so hard to pinpoint a, a certain card trick. Uh, I'll yeah. give you a, my favorite is Triumph. I love Triumph. I'll do Triumph a hundred different ways. It's one of my favorite things to do. So what's yours? So off the top of my head, I can remember the very first card trick that I actually learned. And I still do until today is the two card Monty. Oh, yeah. The two card Monty, uh, when done well, it's, it's extremely fooling. 
And, you know, I've, over the years, I've seen many, many great magicians. I mean, one of them is, of course, David Williamson. Uh, his version of Two Cut Monty is, I uh, absolutely uh, love it. And, and uh, many, many, many others as well. So that is one of the card tricks that has always been, uh, have, have had a special spot in, in my heart. Yeah. So when you get to a point, when you get to the point where uh, the spectator has the card in their hand and they are not allowed to turn it over, what do you do? What is your what is your go to to make sure that that doesn't happen? So I would so you know you condition them the first time right. by saying by doing the you know the fake switch and say without looking what card should be there, and then they will say oh you know Ace of Diamonds for example if that was uh, at, what was it at first so they say Ace of Diamonds I say and I would say are you sure, and then you when I say when I say are you sure, they can either react by turning it over. Or they could say, um, I'm not sure. So at that point of time, you kind of know what kind of audience they are. And then you know how to manage it from there. So for example, if they were to turn it over the first time, I would say, well, I didn't say you could turn it over yet, right? <laughs> or something like that. I, say, with, I, would, say, I would say something like, um, without turning it over. You know, because they checked it themselves. See, now I try not to say that because the moment you say don't turn it over, they want to turn it over. Yeah, but you see, the first time I did that is to condition them. Right. Yeah. So, yes, you can make them obey your orders. Once you get to a certain <laughs> point, you can, you can condition them. Uh, I've always thought, I love that trick a lot. I really do. And the most important part of that trick to me is that moment. Of, of course. Right? Preventing and, them from opening the last two cards prematurely. Yeah. So what I did was, I, I, they're holding this card like this in their fingers, right? And I immediately go right there showing the queen or whatever it is that, right? Just so that there's no way they can't, even if they go to, right. I can stop. That's what I do as well. I so do like a cover in, on top of it. Yeah, that's a, it's a, I, when it comes to that trick, that is the number one little piece of, of, of something that makes it really happen because. Yeah, so, so I've, I've heard of that advice before as well, where you put the, the other two cards that you're holding on yeah. on top of them just to make sure that they don't get it over. Yeah. So when you're doing magic, do you, uh, do you like uh, stage magic, close-up magic, parlor magic? What's your thing? Wow. That's a tough question because over the years I've done everything and I've, I've come to, I've come to love, you know, all the different types of magic. I, I don't consider myself as a very um, uh, strictly close-up magician, for example, mm -hmm. because I do, I do stand up and, and stage as well. But, I would say my first love is still sleight of hand, close up magic kind of thing. That is that is still what you know. If you if you tell me today I won't you know perform professionally or anything like that, that would still be the thing that I would be stuck with myself playing 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 and having fun myself basically. Okay, so I'm gonna catch you off guard here. I know you got a trick for us, a couple of tricks for us today. Yeah. I want you to sh take a deck of cards right now without right. thinking about it and show me something, just anything. Just really quickly, uh, a 30-second trick, whatever. So, something that's sleight of hand <laughs> with a deck of cards. All right, Jamie, I'm going to drop the cards like this. Just say stop wherever you want to. Stop. Oh, too oh, late. Okay, one more time, okay? One more time. Stop. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, look at the card. Remember it. Don't forget it. Uh, lower. Okay, I got it. Oh, got it. I yep, know. I got it. Right there? Okay, perfect. Let's try this. Um, you could have picked any of the cards, right? True. Um, what's your card? Uh, black card. No. No? Okay. Let's see if your card will right here in the middle of the deck. Queen of Spades, was that a card? No? No. No, it was a red card. Yes. Oh, okay. Was it the Ace of Hearts? Yes, very good. Right? So this is, you see, this is something really simple, right? If right. you do this to magicians, it will be like something that they, they won't even think about it. But if you're talking about laymen, when, where, where you can have really short time to do something really quick and effective, you know, something like that is what hits hard. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think, especially as a close-up performer, you need to be able to walk up to people and have something ready to go, boom, that's going to hit hard. Get them in 30 seconds. Because if they're strangers and you walk up to them and say, hey, you guys want to see something cool? They're, they're going to kind of yeah, get yeah, away yeah. from me kind of thing, right? And I, I always use, give me 30 seconds. If you don't like yes. me in 30 seconds, I will leave. Yeah, you and kind you of do don't want to give them the chance to say no to you. So if you were to go and do, if you were walking downtown in Singapore and there was a bunch of people just walking around, can you walk up to them and just destroy them or not? 
Yeah, sure yeah. I could. Yeah, <laughs> sure I could. I, I don't mind. Now that was oh. what I that was what I did when I first started out as well. When I was younger, uh, where I I was not doing you know professional gigs or even restaurants. How how did I find people to perform to? Was I really went out to the streets, you know, and <laughs> imagining you know that I'm a David Blaine and something like that, and find people to perform to, you know. And it's important both to get the the yeses and the noes. You know, I agree. People don't people don't get the noes. People are are offended by the noes. Yeah, the noes are so, for a reason. Either right. they are not interested, and they're not. There are people that don't like magic. They don't. They don't want to yeah. see it. They don't care. They don't want to invest their time. But there's also people that are just skeptical, and they're like, "Ah, who is this Yahoo yeah. that's just coming it's up?" Sure, and and there are people that have bad experience, past experience with magic. Yeah, and, and even the ones that have seen magic, most of the time, the the magic they've seen is their cousin Jeff that did this card trick at Thanksgiving, and it was just horrible, and it was hard to watch for four and a half minutes, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so I <laughs> I, us as magicians, we have to be able to walk up there with the confidence. I was I like the way you answered that question because you were right off the, you know, you knew exactly what I was saying. So yeah, <laughs> you know, being able to do that is, is a great thing. Okay, so. Uh, I know you you've got a coin trick set up for us, and yeah. I want you, I, I want you to build this up and and let us know kind of what's going to happen and uh, why you love this trick so much. So the reason why I like this trick is because um, it's direct, it's simple, it's easy to understand. Uh, the plot is not complicated, and there are multiple magical moments in in the in the routine. Okay, That's well. This is your stage, man. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. Right. And, so, and let's um, take a look. It starts off very simply, like a normal coin trick where you would go up to somebody and pick a coin from behind the ear. But of course, it doesn't end there, right? I'm going to bring the camera down because what's going to happen next will happen right here on the table. Okay. Oh, by the way, don't mind this spot over here because I basically accidentally burnt my mat. You're with a pyro. A piece of flesh. <laughs> yeah, with a flash paper. How about that? Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now look, if I take the coin, it disappears right here on the table, but it doesn't go too far though. It actually trails right here on my arm to the sleeves, along with the other three coins right there. Okay? I'm going to lay them out in a little uh, formation, which I'm sure magicians will know what is going to happen next. Can you, can you see the coins? Yep, I can see them very okay. good. Now watch carefully because magic is going to happen in between the spaces. If I just do a wave like this, jumps, goes next. Again, and finally, one last time to get jump from one side to the other. Right there, thank you. That looks so good. <laughs> now, this coins, they, this coins, they look the same. Okay, oh, so you sorry, you were saying something? I was just gonna say, shadow coins is one of my favorite things <laughs> there is. Oh, thank you. There's so thank many you. different ways to do it, but that looks so good. It really looks good. Yeah, I'll talk more about that later on, uh, okay. like this version of it later on. So okay. these coins, they look the same. So let's number them off, okay? Coin okay. one, two, three, and four. So Jamie, tell me which coin would you like to be the leader coin? I want to be number one. Number one. Okay, great. The, the leader coin goes into the coin box first. So let me just show you the coin box. This is, uh, you know, no trap dolls, yep. no secret compartment, same for the lid, okay? Leader coin goes into the box first, which makes the other three followers, and they will follow their leader one by one into the coin box, starting with the first coin, it goes right there into the box to join the leader, and that is the two coins in the box. Two down, two to go. Next, at the count of three, it's going to happen one, two, three, and that's the third coin that goes there in the box. The last coin is the most difficult one because if you see, there's very little space in the box left for the last coin. In fact, it's just enough for the last coin over there. And to make this even more difficult for myself, I'm going to cover the box. You can hear the coins jiggling in there. Yes. This last coin is going to join the other three and going to do this in mid air, okay? One, two, three. Oh. Sometimes they go the other way. So good. Right. So that's it. Good yeah. job. Way to go. Thank good you. job. <laughs> I watched on your, uh, your, your sleight of hand specifically. Most of the time when I watch stuff, I want to be entertained. So I'm, I'm not looking for methods. I don't care. When I was watching you, I, I watched your Magic Castle performance. 
and I was, I was watching for methods. And uh, <laughs> even though I saw what you were doing, it was so smooth. It was so natural. It looked so good. And I was really happy to watch that. A lot of people that I see do that kind of stuff, especially when you're doing the cups and balls, the cups and balls. And then at the end, when you did the McDonald aces, that was, yeah. it was so nice. It was so nice. It was, and I actually, the McDonald aces are one of my favorite things to do either McDonald or grandpa, whatever you want to call them, depending yes, on yeah. whether they're appearing or transposing. Um, it's one of my favorite things and the way you handled it. I, I really, really love that. It was a great way to do that. Books or videos? Okay. So here's the interesting thing. When I started out, I started out with all videos. So DVDs. DVDs were the thing uh, back then during the time when I first started out. And i um, not ashamed to tell you guys because I know there are some people that are not, uh, that do not like them. I started out with a lot of illusionist videos. DVDs. You know, illusionists at that time were the were the hip company, right? I mean, they still are. Well, they were, <laughs> they were, the, they were revolutionary when it came to to getting magic to or, or the ability yeah. to do magic to yes anybody and that they really made it wanted cool. it yes they, they did. made it cool they made it cool you they know? had the whole so to, to a teenager then wanting to start out magic you wouldn't so much go to the l and l's even though they the l and l's yeah. had magic in them but they were less cooler compared to illusionists well if you watched right? it daryl's encyclopedia of card slates is the best dvd set there is for guys they want to learn card magic and it's kind of goofy and silly and kind of you know geeky whatever you want to call it and then illusionists came along right after david blaine came out and they had their street magic package right so they're yeah, saying street yeah. magic and <laughs> people are like oh street magic, oh yeah david blaine so they were all over it and that was the beginning of 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 illusionist but uh, illusionist did a smart thing when they put out their first real video their very first video was ninja right yeah they taught the pass right yeah. that is not something you would get as a beginner that is not something that comes out uh, unfortunately for me the way i start I, I i must be a little bit older than you um i started out with expert at the card table which mm -hmm. is like the most horrible thing that you could ever get as a person yeah. that, that knows nothing right you're reading it and i i yeah. you know I, i'm reading you know, Mandarin Chinese or something like that. Yeah, with them putting out Ninja, right? You don't see that. And, it, it, and that was big for them because they put out a big move as their first big thing, right? And that got them a lot of attention. And the way they made those videos, they were, it was like the cool thing. It was the yeah. you know, the cool factor, right? So people saw that and yeah, that good good on them. Good on, I think that was a great thing. So, yes, uh, so that was how I started, you know, with a lot of DVDs, videos, uh, that was how I started. But eventually, what got me to change to books, which is what I, what I do, you know, go to a lot now is books and DVDs, of course. So, so I, I think I have a good combination of both. Is when I saw Michael Vincent yes. perform. You know, Michael Vincent is an amazing side of hand artist. So I saw him perform on, uh, it wasn't for us. It was even before that. It was his very first tape that he came out with, Alakazam Magic. Um, yeah, it's so Michael Vincent, you know, first DVD set. And in there, he was doing amazing sleight of hand cut, cut magic. And that was the first time where I really did a lot of all this serious stuff uh, that has to do with routining. How do you, you know, how do you move? How do you put your finger move, your fingers and everything like that. And at the end of the DVD, what was good was he referenced everything back to the books that he learned everything for. Absolutely. So here's my thing. When it comes to books and videos, okay, videos are fantastic. When it comes to things that are like a little bit knuckle busting and, and you're trying to see that, how is he getting that, you know, where's that finger when this happens or whatever. And it's good for that. It's bad for uh, the people that buy it and watch it and just absolutely repeat what's going on in the video. That's the problem with the videos. Okay, for example, uh, King of Spades, right? And mm -hmm. you can bring this up and you show it to people, the King of Spades. You put it down. That was so good, man. That was and, really and good. You, you switch it. Yeah, so. So how do you, so you're, you're showing the card. Oh, I'm in the wrong camera. Yeah, here. So you're showing the card, but you're, you have the other card. Is so, it, so, so this, this is what happens, okay? On the upswing, while you are going to show, what's going to happen is this. 
Oh, I get it. So it's right. so on the upstroke, you're coming like this, but at the same time pulling this card back. All right. Get it yeah. underneath, and then you. So from from down. your view, they see oh, this, I like, that. like you're showing this card, right? And then you bring it back, and then you just put it down. I like that. That's nice. That's it's very. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's very rare that I see somebody with a card slight or something like that that I haven't even you know, <laughs> thought of. And that's that's one I've never seen. I've never seen that. That's that's that, I really it's I really cool, like that. Yeah. It doesn't happen very often. So that's that's yeah. awesome. So basically, it is. If you think about it, it is basically the the top chain, right? Right. It is basically a top chain that is done one handed. Yeah. That's yeah. And uh, to make it, basically to make it motivated, what you're doing is you're doing this like, oh, you show king of spades, and then you basically bring it, bring it up to another angle to show people, like maybe for the people on this side, you can see the I like king it. of spades. I almost got it there, right? So it's, you're in the motion of showing this card, yeah. and that motion you're bringing, oh, I can't now, I just did it, but so that goes out, this comes in as you show up. All right, yes, And then yes. when you come down and square it up, it's <laughs> no longer the king. That's good. I like it. Yeah. I like it. But you know what? I never use this in real life when I'm performing. I right? not well, <laughs> because. Yeah. Okay, Ming. So here is your chance. Plug yourself. How can people get a hold of you? What do they want to know? What do you want them to see? What do you have going on? Tell us about it right now. All right. So um, firstly, if you still don't know my name, my name is Ming Da. M I N G D A. Okay, you can call me Ming. So I am on Instagram. You can see me um, put up videos and my stuff on Instagram. Uh, all you need to find is, you know, my handle, which is magic, M-A-G-I-C-S-N-G. So S-N-G is my last name, my, my family name. Okay? And so I believe I learned how to say it. It's Sing. Correct. It yes. has no vowels in it. It's not a mistake. So how, uh, how I came up with this name was quite interesting because my friends, they know that I'm a magician. And they say, why don't you call yourself the magi magician? <laughs> you know, the play with the, 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 how it sounds like when they put it together. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. That's how I came up with the name. So Magic SNG, that's my Instagram name. Uh, if you search uh, my name, Ming Ta and Magician on, on Google or anything, Singapore, you, you can add Singapore behind it. You should be able to find me, my YouTube channel, everything like that, uh, where you can see my Magic Castle performance on YouTube. I will put a link. I will, I'll put a link here. I watched right. it. It's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I mean, the little bit of um, unfortunate thing is they did take it from a bad angle, relatively bad angle. I, uh, yeah. But, you know, I, 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 I performed well, so I think it was fine. I think it looked good. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's how you can find more about me. Okay, and if you guys want to see more about Ming Da, uh, I've got some links here. The guy is incredibly, incredibly uh, uh, unique. He does some things that you don't see everybody else do, and it's really fun to watch. And his Magic Castle performance, watch his, his, his Chop Cup. It's not like every other Chop Cup you see, and that's what the great thing is. So thanks for watching. Thanks for checking it out. This is the best magicians you have never heard of with Ming Da, and now you've heard of them. Mm -hmm.